Washington, this is VOA News. I'm Ray Kugel reporting. Congress approves action on Iran nuclear agreement. The U.S. House of Representatives overwhelmingly passed a bill giving Congress the right to approve or reject a nuclear deal with Iran. Thursday's vote was 400 to 25. The Senate passed the measure last week. The White House says President Obama, who had threatened to veto it, now plans to sign it. The bill gives Congress 30 days to review a nuclear deal among Iran, the U.S., and five other major world powers. During those 30 days, Mr. Obama would be barred from waiving any U.S. sanctions against Iran. President Obama says the United States has an ironclad commitment to the security of its Gulf allies and would consider using military force if they were threatened. Mr. Obama hosted a summit of six leaders and senior ministers from the Gulf Cooperation Council at the Camp David Presidential Retreat north of Washington Thursday. The six Gulf leaders came to the summit looking for reassurances from the president that the United States is fully committed to their security. Burundi's presidential office says President Pierre Nkurunziza is back in the country, saying that a military coup attempted while he was in Tanzania has failed. Mr. Nkurunziza's office says security forces are looking for the coup leaders so they can be brought to justice. There's been no independent verification of the president's return to Burundi. Rival army factions were still battling for control of the capital, Bujumbura, on Thursday. The fighting was centered around the state radio and TV complex, with troops who support the coup trying to take it from soldiers loyal to the president. This is VOA News. The northern Nigerian city of Maiduguri is under an army-imposed dusk-to-dawn curfew after suspected Boko Haram militants attacked the Borno state capital the first time in two months. Witnesses say hundreds of militants carried out the assault Wednesday with guns and heavy explosives. There were also reports that several suicide bombers were among the attackers. Soldiers repelled the attack after several hours of fighting. The French news agency reports at least three Nigerian soldiers, six vigilante fighters, and dozens of Boko Haram fighters were killed. Despite a ceasefire in Yemen, the fighting continues. Edward Uranian reports. News media Thursday reported Houthi rebel militiamen fired tank shells and rockets at Sunni tribal fighters in Yemen's third largest city of Taz overnight in one of several reported violations of a humanitarian ceasefire. Saudi-owned Al Arabiya TV reported that Houthi militiamen also shelled their opponents in the port city of Aden, in Dala, in Lauder, and in Marib. The Houthis Al Masira TV said that Saudi planes bombed a market in Hodaida and a civilian vehicle in northern Sada province. VOA could not independently verify the claims. Edward Uranian, Cairo. The Islamic State group released an audio message it says is from its leader Abu Bakr al Baghdadi, who's not been seen or heard from in months. The message urges Muslims to take up arms in its cause and emigrate to the caliphate it is proclaimed in areas of Syria and Iraq. Western news agencies have not been able to verify whether the voice was al-Baghdadi's. President Obama thanked first responders and others who helped victims of Tuesday's Amtrak train accident in Philadelphia. President Obama also conveyed his deepest condolences to the families of the victims. Another body was pulled from the wreckage Thursday, pushing the death toll to at least eight, with another 200 injured, some of them critically. Investigators are trying to determine why the train was traveling at more than twice the posted speed limit before it crashed. 
But the lawyer for the train's engineer said Thursday he suffered a concussion in the accident and cannot recall what happened. The Taliban claimed responsibility Thursday for an hours-long attack on a guest house in Kabul, the Afghan capital, that killed 14 civilians, including several foreigners. The attack began Wednesday night when gunmen began shooting at the Park Palace Hotel during a party for foreigners. Five hours later, it ended with police killing three assailants. The U.S. Embassy says one American was among the dead, while Indian officials say four Indians were killed. Taliban claims the militants targeted the party because of the presence of Americans. I'm Ray Kugel in Washington. That's the latest world news from BOA.